Good morning, my beloved students. How are you today? Our lesson is related to Africa and how their uh, young people are able to transform their uh, countries and to get rid of all the travel they face. We have a story of a great um, African um, a young man who was able to transform his country to, to uh, add a great uh, um, thing to his country and to uh, start to put an end to their suffering regarding electricity. Uh, we know that in Africa we don't have a um, variety of electrical uh, resources. That's why most of the people in Africa suffer from the lack of electricity. And uh, their people, however, are able to uh, find some solution for that one uh, by using, for example, the windmills. And uh, we all know that it's a, a very cheap kind of electricity and it's like a non-polluting uh, kind of electricity. Okay, so we will start our reading passage. Um, the title, this is the title of the reading passage. A young uh, tinker builds a windmill, electrifying a nation. So this uh, great young man to the, uh, up to, right up to the uh, picture, you can see him. This man uh, is a great one, is able to do a great effort for his um, city and, and the country. Uh, Mesotela, Malawi on the continent. So, for sure, uh, African continent, sadly short of electricity. 20-year-old uh, William Kam uh, uh, has a dream. His dream is to power up his country uh, one mill at a time. Okay, so far he has built three windmills in his yard here. He used blue gum trees and bicycle bars. So very, very simple materials. His tallest at uh, three uh, at uh, 39 feet rises over this uh, windswept village. It clatters uh, away as it bowers his family's few electrical appliances. So he will start to use these, uh, um, this kind of electricity for uh, providing electricity for his uh, house first. Uh, 10 6 watt light bulbs, E TV set, and a radio. The machine draws in visitors from miles around. So when the people Heard about that, they start to come a big number to watch this great invention. Mr. Uh, Cam Kwamba is a self taught. He took up a windmill building after seeing a picture of one in an old textbook. He's now uh, working on a new design. He wants to build a windmill powerful enough to pump water from wells and provide lighting for messy tower. Mesitella is a group of buildings where about 60 families live. So he starts to get some new and creative ideas for lightening um, all his um, um, like neighborhood and all the uh, parts around it. Then he wants to build more windmills for other villages across the country. Uh, betting he can do it, a group of investors is paying for him to go to school. I was thinking about electricity, says Mr. Uh, he explains how he got excited about wind. So the first uh, way to uh, do something in a great way is to have love and excitement about it. I was actually thinking about what I'd like to have at home. And I was thinking, what can I do? To meet his family's growing power needs, he recently hammered in a shiny store boat windmill. It is next to the big one at his home. He also put in solar panels. He has another windmill still in its box. He will bought it up at a house 70 miles away in the capital, Lilong. Lilong is where he now goes to school. A few years ago, he built a windmill for the elementary school in Masitala. He used it to teach to, um, to an informal to teach an informal windmill building course. So he will give like offer some courses for the people on how to use and how to build uh, windmills. Lately, he has offered to help the village handyman down the road build his own machine. Energy poverty is the lack of modern fuels and electrical supplies in poor parts of the world. So they were not rich in energy. They had a great problem in this part, which would mean that they would never be able to uh, use or run any kind of appliances. It's a subject of great interest to development economists. So the people, the economists at this time had a great um, like uh, respect for this matter and want to find solution for all this uh, problem for the 
uh, power problem. The windmill at the uh, Camp Kwamba family compound, a few brick buildings, sitting on a hill overlooking the village, has turned the place into a stop for the curious. People traveling across Malawi's dry plains drop by. Villagers now regularly make the dusty walk up the hill to charge their cell phones. So, uh, like charging cell phones or doing something like that would take longer hours and you would suffer a lot. The machine causing all the fuss is a tower. It's made from tied together blue gum tree trunks. From a distance, it looks like an old oil derrick. Four blades, Mr. Kamkwamba used uh, flattened plastic pipes. He built a turbine from extra bicycle parts. When the wind kicks up, the blades spin very fast. They rock the power, uh, the tower powerfully back and forth. So when the air bushes them, they start to move all around and they generate electricity. Mr. Kamkwamba's wind's fascination started six years ago. He wasn't going to school anymore. Why? Because his family couldn't afford the $80, $80 uh, dollar a year uh, tuition. When he wasn't helping his family uh, farm groundnuts uh, and soya beans, he was reading. He stumbled onto a photograph of a windmill in a book donated to the local library. He started to build one himself. The project seemed a waste of time to his parents and the rest of Messi Tower. At first, we were laughing at him, so at the beginning, people were taking it as a sarcastic act. They did not believe that he was so genius and would, would be able to do a great thing. Says Agnes uh, Kamkwamba, his mother, we thought he was doing something useless. The laughter ended when he uh, hooked up his uh, windmill. He hooked it up to a thin copper wire, a car battery, and a light bulb for each room of the family's main house. The family soon started enjoying the signs of modern life. They got a radio and more recently a TV. They no longer have to buy fuel for lantern light. Two of Mr. Kamkwamba's sex sisters stay up late studying for school, so they got used uh, of um, they got the utmost use of uh, this great creation or this great invention. Our lives are much happier now, Mrs. Kamkwamba says. The new power also attracted a number of admirers. Last November, Hartford, uh, a Malawian educator, heard about the windmill. Uh, this great man drove out to Camp Kwamba House with some reporters. After the news hit the uh, blogosphere, a group of business people looking for ideas in Africa located uh, Mr. Camp Kwamba. TED, uh, the group, invites the uh, likes of Al Gore and Bono, those great people, famous people. They invited them to share ideas at conferences. The group invited Mr. Kampwamba to a brainstorming session earlier this year. This would mean that he has done a great job and is going to meet great people like him. In June, Mr. Kampwamba was uh, on stage at the TED conference in Tanzania. And the word TED stands for Technology Entertainment Design. I got information about a windmill and I tried and I made it, he said in uncertain English to a big round of applause. After the conference, a group of business people, African bloggers, and venture capitalists promised to pay for his education so people would start to help him because they do believe in his great capacities. Some of them had been uh, teary eyed at the speech. Okay, so he, he's lucky enough because he's uh, like. Uh, he has met great people who are able to support him. His supporters have also flooded him with new gadgets. These gadgets include a cell phone with a, a hip-hop ringtone, uh, a laptop, and an iPod. Kelly, uh, um, uh, Breakaway, and uh, is his current favorite song. They uh, rewired his fam family's house. The rewiring replaced the homemade switch he made out of flip-flop parts. They are paying for him to attend an expensive international school in the capital. The school is for children, foreign uh, missionaries, and aid workers. But his teacher uh, sometimes worries about his one-track mind. She worries about all the attention he's getting. I don't want him to be seen as William, the windmill maker, uh, said his teacher one day recently. Mr. Kamkwamba quietly worked on homework. His classmates were busy gossiping and checking their Facebook profiles.
Mr. Kemkonba has told his family to maintain the windmill when he's away at school. His sister, uh, Dolisenkov, and cousin Geoffrey can quickly climb up the tower as it sways and clatters in the wind to make repairs. Still, a stream of curious visitors make the trip to Kemkonba compound. They arrive mostly unannounced. The visits are upsetting for the shy family. One afternoon, a pair of Malawan health workers came by. They wanted to get a closer look and meet Mr. Kamkonda. The family left quickly, leaving the repair dressed in shirts and ties for the occasion, standing awkwardly in the yard. We have heard about his windmill, and so we wanted to see it for ourselves. One finally spoke up. Mr. Kamkonda came around to shake hands. Then he quickly moved away to show another visitor around. Jealousy is a social taboo in this part, so people are not like so jealous about each other. But Fred, uh, an educator who works in WIM, the area that includes Masitala, says the family's new success is causing some problems. Why? Because people do desire what's happening here. They come and admire, he says. They think they might get the same support if they build a WIM. So they start to have some sort of jealousy. Out of him. Down the hill, the village handyman started building his own windmill. He had secretly studied Mr. Kamkwamba's. A blast of wind blew the uh, blades of the man's first few attempts, so he wasn't able to, to do the same task. Uh, however, Mr. Kamkwamba offered to help him rebuild, but got no reply. It's out of uh, all of this out of jealousy, I'm sure. I'm, getting, I'm waiting to see if he's serious, Mr. Kamkwamba says. So this is a story of a great man. Uh, this man was able, Mr. Kamkonda was able to transform his place to uh, like electrify his uh, neighborhood and the parts around to inspire people to build and do great things for their themselves and for the uh, places around them. This is our lesson for today. Uh, story for an inspiring man locally. Um, um, don't forget to do your homework. Thank you so much and have a nice morning.